Canadians, we are known as polite, cooperative people, always willing to help. So when we saw Europeans wrestling with new free trade agreements, we thought, we can help with that. We know all about trade because of NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. NAFTA was signed 22 years ago. NAFTA was meant to grow the economies of all three countries, create hundreds of thousands of new jobs, and generate greater wealth for everyone. But it didn't happen. Canadian manufacturing jobs began moving to the U.S., where labor standards are lower. The Caterpillar Corporation used to build locomotives in Ontario. Six years ago, Caterpillar demanded its employees take a 50% pay cut. When they refused, Caterpillar moved its production line to Indiana. 600 Canadian workers lost their jobs. Their families were devastated. Then four years later, those American workers, earning half as much, well, they lost their jobs too. Caterpillar moved its production line to Mexico, where it could pay even less. In the past six years alone, Canada has lost 350,000 manufacturing jobs. Incomes have stagnated. Family debt is at historic levels. NAFTA is not the only reason, but it's a big one. So-called free trade deals do more than just lower wages. They lower standards for food safety, health, and the environment. It's what trade agreements like CETA and TTIP call harmonization. Harmonization usually means reducing regulatory standards to the lowest common denominator. And that's not all. NAFTA gave corporations special rights, rights that are in CETA and TTIP too. Let's say a government puts in a new government regulation. Under NAFTA, if a foreign corporation feels it will hurt its future profits, they can sue. Unlike everyone else, corporations don't have to go through the normal legal system. They get their own VIP system. They can ask special investor state dispute settlement panels, ISDS for short, to arbitrate. The panel arbitrators are paid thousands of euros a day. It's a lucrative business for an elite cadre of lawyers who call themselves the club. On average, Governments pay 4 million euros just to defend themselves. Under NAFTA, Canada has been sued 37 times. It's the most sued developed country in the world. So far, the Canadian government has paid out 135 million euros, mostly to American corporations. Cases worth 1.75 billion euros are pending. Once upon a time, Canada banned imports of gasoline containing MMT. It's a suspected neurotoxin. Through NAFTA, an American company, Ethel Corporation, forced Canada to reverse its ban. In addition, Canada had to pay Ethel 10.2 million euros for lost revenue. An energy company is suing the Canadian government for 152 million euros. This is because the province of Quebec put a temporary ban on fracking under the St. Lawrence River. But didn't we hear that the EU Commission changed ISDS? Well, they changed the name. Now they are calling the three arbitrators judges, and they will be selected differently. But a fresh coat of paint doesn't change the basic problem. Foreign corporations would still have rights that no one else has. But in NAFTA, those were big, bad American companies, right? After all, Canada's regulatory standards are a lot like Europe's. Harmonizing European and Canadian standards shouldn't be anything to worry about, eh? Well, no. Here's the problem. Almost every big American corporation has a Canadian subsidiary. Let's say that TTIP is never signed. Through CETA, nearly 42,000 American corporations could use their Canadian subsidiaries to challenge the EU's environmental, health, and labor standards. With CETA, the EU predicts small growth. Is this deal really worth it? These trade deals put our democracies at stake. 
on both sides of the Atlantic, we are uniting to defeat these deals. We can stop CETA, and we need to do it now. Join us.